Live and Learn. Welcome to Season 2 of our weekly conversations about living, learning, teaching and intercultural communication. We discuss cultural awareness and diversity, education and mentality, and we never really know where our talk will bring us in each episode. So, we just follow our curiosity and invite you to join us. In today's special episode, we celebrate World Teachers' Day and discuss what it means to be a teacher, to meet modern as well as eternal challenges of teaching and learning, and to be proud of or satisfied with your work as an educator. Join us on this special day, follow Live and Learn podcast on your favorite social media and podcast platforms. Happy Teacher's Day! Happy World Teacher's Day! So this is not only the Teacher's Day nationally or locally, this is the World Teacher's Day where everybody's celebrating, celebrating all the efforts, all the uh, time, all the experience, all the development put into the learning process. Learning and teaching process, which uh, makes teachers uh, feel tired over the year, And uh, they obviously need the support of other colleagues who would say, you're doing great, you're doing important uh, things. And uh, the fact that you get tired is something that uh, is common to all of us. We all get tired from time to time, but we still put effort into it and we still enjoy the process. And we are here to support one another on this uh, World Teachers Day. So this is the day of our professional tribe. How many times have we used this phrase uh, in our podcasts? But I keep on saying that being a part of a larger professional group always gives a good platform to stand stronger together, not to feel alone, not to feel abandoned, not to feel left out. For me, this is a beautiful way to celebrate what we are trying to reach together. So this is a beautiful opportunity to celebrate uh, what we all are doing as a front line of teaching, of uh, trying to bring the best quality and trying to implement the best strategies, tactics, learning um, theories, and come up with the new technology, with the new tools, everything to make the learning process more efficient, more satisfactory, more unforgettable, and to have pleasure of learning and having fun. Teaching and having fun. If we as teachers have fun, our students have fun too, of course. I've uh, more than once been uh, in the classrooms where a teacher felt bored. As a student, I felt bored immediately the first moment I found myself there. At the same time, however tired I could be as a student, if a teacher was excited, I got excited immediately the first moment I was there. This is something that um, gives us as teachers responsibility for being motivated, for feeling the energy that we bring into the classroom, for having something to share, because if we are low on energy, we have very little to share with our students. If, on the contrary, we are motivated, we are full of energy, we got inspired, then we have uh, something, hopefully much, to bring into the classroom and uh, share our energy of teaching and learning with our students. That is something that uh, we've been talking in our work-life balance and well-being uh, episode taking care of your own personal readiness, resourcefulness, and well-being becomes a um, guarantee 
that you have the capacity to teach whatever the content is, whatever the strategy, whatever the syllabus, whatever the methodic. Because we discussed that, that work-life balance is not actually the balance, but how to bring everything work together. So it's not more or less one or another, but trying to leave it as a symbi symbiosis, right? So to, to have a symbiotic connection between those things that during the work, I also leave. That's my life. It doesn't stop when the work starts, right? So this is the beautiful idea that you keep on saying uh, if we're talking about well-being. So it's again, it's well-being in the family. It's well-being with our closest people, with our partners. Is everything fine at home? Then the, the higher level is everything's fine around us. In in again in the profession, in uh, sports, in in hobbies, and then the 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 macro level. I don't know. Is everything's fine in our country? Is everything's fine in our city? Going on and so on. So we have so many things to worry about, even before we enter the class. And we bring all of this uh, with us into the classroom. That's why also the issue of burnout that uh, is not so strong in the beginning of uh, an academic year, but is uh, very much an issue in the end of uh, a school year. That's why Teacher Appreciation Week, uh, that is the first full week of May, that is celebrated to give feedback to teachers on behalf of students, parents, uh, school management, and say, we do appreciate what you've been doing during this school year, and we do thank you for all your effort. It's so important. So in the beginning, look how interesting it is. In the beginning of the school year, we have this uh, International World uh, Teachers' Day, in the end of the school year, we have uh, Teacher Appreciation Week, and that uh, circles it all. Another question is, uh, I've noticed uh, recently that uh, some teachers shared uh, these um, stickers or backgrounds on uh, their Facebook profiles or social network profiles saying, I'm proud to be a teacher. This message somehow made me puzzled. I never thought of uh, sharing it myself, and I cannot even say if I am proud to be a teacher. I am me, as I also very often say, I am me. I am a mother. I don't share it every day saying I am proud to be a mother or happy to be one or whatever else. Neither do I share these things about my professional life or about uh, my other relationship. What do you think is there in this uh, message? Identification. To me, this is uh, claiming the part of the identity. As our identity consists of many shades, of many um, elements, as you said, being a mother, being a uh, woman, being a, I don't know, a Ukrainian, or th those are all parts of the um, identity. In my understanding, claiming a part of the identity is uh, something that unites those who claim it. So basically, why the uh, the national holidays are so important because they unite everybody who identifies themselves with this nation, with this culture, with these rituals, and so on. I guess this is the same part of uh, having a professional identity. And when people are claiming it, so they are trying to show, I guess, most probably this is, that would be my guess, that they are part of this professional tribe in, in this case. I think that gives a boost of, you know, the sense of belonging to something 
which has a meaning. I guess this is a uh, situation when we are trying to reflect upon what we are doing. If the profession we chose is something that brings us joy and satisfaction and financial remuneration, sustainable living, well, that is always a question, right? We are asking ourselves, is this something that I want to do? If this is something I need to do, if this is something I can do, if this is something that can I can live on. Asking ourselves these questions all over again, year after year, semester after semester, keeps, uh, keeps at least teachers, at least me, wanting to continue or deciding to what to change, what to improve, what to focus the efforts on what to focus finance on and so on is being proud uh, part of this you think i think being proud is part of the ownership the sense of the ownership when you make your own decision you own your responsibilities and you own your results having the praise having the celebration and being proud of what you do when it works when you see the result when you see feel this reward and feeling is the part of ownership so i think this would be kind of a check or kind of a sign that people are thinking if this is their vocation if this is their their decision if they have the voice or they're voiceless about it i can be rough in, in in the formulations but i'm being totally sincere because i'm talking right now about myself and about the environments in which i've been working and in every department you can see people who are just sitting there and not doing their 100 percent they don't know what they're doing here and this becomes very clear if you own it, if you belong, or if you just ignore it or deny. But I want to be totally clear about it that I'm maybe vulnerable about discussing such intimate th thoughts, but as well, I'm, I am proud of being a teacher. I'm proud that it is the decision I made and the decision I'm making every semester. That will be already the 30th semester for me as a teacher. And I've been making this decision every semester again and again. I've got two observations, I think, here. One is because uh, being proud is not something I know, referring to any activity that I'm involved into. And uh, very often do people uh, congratulate me on something I've achieved saying, uh, you must be proud of this. And this is not something I feel. I've heard this many times from you after getting another certificate or something, you must be proud of yourself or of your achievements. But being proud is not something that I know as a feeling. And uh, for me, this is not about pride, but maybe about enjoying the process. And I don't make a decision every semester. I just continue doing what I do every lesson, every day. I don't make a decision. I might need to make a decision whether to have a lesson or not if I don't feel good or whether to commit into a new relationship, a new student, a new group, and that's it. And then I don't make a decision on whether to continue doing this work or not. This is just something I enjoy doing, so I keep on doing this. Concerning the feeling of belonging to a group, I cannot say I'm part of a group of Ukrainian teachers of English, international teachers of uh, foreign languages. 
teachers of Italian uh, language and culture, I don't belong to one particular group. Maybe that's why I cannot say I'm proud to be part of this group. I don't own this. And uh, this is one observation. So just being proud is not uh, something that uh, is a marker for me to say whether I'm doing the right thing. Another observation was um, about the word proud in Italian, which is uh, fiero, feminine fiera, which in this form is the same word for fair as uh, an exhibition of your results. Mm -hmm. So the same word as a noun, fiera, and as an adjective, feminine, proud, is the same word in Italian, which might also say something important about it. Showing off, yeah? So this is something that would not make you feel comfortable uh, of like showing off to me. As you know, I'm not very comfortable with uh, going to any kind of an exhibition, conference. Uh, I am. That's a beautiful difference. About the feeling of pride that you claim that you don't feel. I think the biggest um, counter-argument that I had while I was listening to you was... Uh, uh, being part of sport competition, and this is something that you, you, you didn't have, right, in a bigger team, in a team sport. So for me, uh, I have, what, 15 years of uh, volleyball when you have a team and you compete and you have the, the sense of the competition, the sense of your team, sense of doing your best and being a, yeah, a team. That's That's something that, when you win the game, you, you have this uh, pride that, okay, maybe it's not pride, the, the sense of satisfaction, the sense of we did it. And this is something that most probably derives from the teamwork, the team achievement. And maybe this is a transferable you know, feeling for me because, yeah, you say that you are doing your lessons every day. I do my lessons every semester. And when I say yes to a new group, and when I sign the contract, it's always one semester. So I don't know what will be happening the next semester. Or I can start planning. My planning horizon is always a semester long. It always has been since like school. And I do live in this cyclical variation of uh, yeah my, my calendar inside my head is semesters so yeah the contracts are semesters universities are semesters and everything that is in between is my own personal study in time when I increase my skills when I do professional development you know in a bulk way like specifically in new course or what I have time to do or what I want to do or what I want to achieve. So I guess it's beautiful that we have very different contexts, even though we have a lot of shared experience. Back to sports. I've never chosen team sports. I've always done uh, individual uh, kinds of sports. And even in doing individual kinds of sports, I've never chosen to take part in competitions. Never. When you mentioned, maybe it's not pride, but satisfaction. Well, satisfaction is something that uh, I can relate to, absolutely. While pride is not. Not taking part in competitions, but just enjoying the process of swimming, of running, and it's even not about being uh, stronger or faster. It's just about being on your way. Let's celebrate individual um, preferences, individuals, individual 
characteristics and our personality means so much and this is what our students as well love us for uh or hate us for i don't know uh that is the same thing because we bring the personality to the class we bring the personality to students and we are different one from another not only for the content that we're teaching not only the methodology that we're choosing or tools but also for our personality that's the beauty of having a lot of people, a lot of professionals, very different ones. That's why I wanted to ask you what you took as uh, experience this year during that conference on the World Teachers Day. It's just like teacher staff room on a global level. There were 1,000 people in a uh, Zoom room listening to one hour long uh, speaker and then the next one, there were top you know, world level, Sophia Mavridi, Sarah Mercer. And, and Who was it organized by? British Council and the IATAFL, International Association of Teaching Teachers of English Language together with British Council. So this is the tops of the tops. And like the very idea that you have 1000 people listening to you and it was streamed on Facebook, uh, like I don't even know how many people were watching the stream, but that means that all of these people are coming from the curiosity, from willingness to achieve more, from willingness to be better, to be more, I don't know, recognized or to be updated at least, to be in line with, with what's happening. And when, for example, Sarah Mercer is giving the, uh, her research on teachers' well-being and how under-researched it is as a topic, though it is the cornerstone of the quality of teaching is the, the teacher's well-being so she gave a fantastic thought that look right now we're 1000 of people who have their time their saturday devoted to learning and professional development and the ideas that we are discussing right now will be changing the, the whole ecology of all the teachers and if we are talking about well-being on the uh, webinar, so if you keep on talking about this in your staff room, with your teachers, with your administration, with your students, if you're saying that it's okay for me, uh, I need some time to rest, I need to be ready, I don't want to stay to, I don't know, to check your classwork up to 12 o'clock in the um, at one o'clock in the morning because i want to be ready tomorrow to be 100 percent for you this is important to that all this 1000 people discuss this thought within their working environment and that will be a huge change huge impact because yeah, it's ideas that change everything. How you imply those ideas, how do you deliver those ideas? That was a very powerful moment, you know, an illuminating moment when you understand that those 1000 people are not passive listeners, but active receptors of the ideas. Yeah, we, we might not know each other. There were more than 100 countries online within those 1000 teachers but can you imagine what what is the impact if the idea is viable that that's simply you know global level of understanding how ecology works and then if all the teachers uh, bring this idea back to their classrooms around the world uh, this changes uh, everything the approach to work even if it's not a nine-to-five job, there should be clear 
boundaries to the hours every teacher is doing. And uh, when we say it's never been a nine to five job, we mean that we have always um, been investing more than we were paid for. Let's be uh, clear here. That's why we need more appreciation because we feel we're not getting enough. Yeah, it's like this, um, mm, how is it called? The phenomenon of uh, social justice. When you uh, go along the street and you meet someone, you say hello, they say hello back to you, you're okay. If you say hello and they don't respond, you feel that something goes wrong. You might even not realize that um, it's social, it's the lack of social justice that's happening, but you feel bad about it. I don't know. To me, it sounds like the second uh, law of Newton, uh, as much energy is uh, given, you should get as much energy back. Maybe that, that is the second Newton's law. Or I know the fancy word reciprocation, right? So as much you give, you expect to, to receive back. Then uh, back to this need for appreciation. If it's always been like that, there has been a lot of burnout, there has been little pay. We need this appreciation, like extra appreciation to say, we do value what you are doing. Even if you have this burnout, even if you are underpaid. Reimagining this situation, let's uh, make it a job with clear boundaries, with the right to say, I need some rest, with exact hours of work fairly paid for. And then we won't probably need so much extra appreciation. But a special day is anyway good. I really love the idea that was uh, pronounced today very clearly uh, that we've been <laughs> we've been discussing in our podcast since June I guess the very thing behind all the digital race for more applications more tools more using everything together learning everything we should be picky we should be more precautious about how much need is there for this specific game which will take 10 minutes of your class and you've been spending all the night long and now you're not really happy with that you didn't sleep much and this game would be just 10 minutes so. And the students don't feel so happy because they have a tired teacher and the game somehow doesn't work. Uh, another idea that I, was my takeaway today that was very well formulated. I, you know, I really love, there, there are so many ideas and that's why I, I come to the uh, endlessly to those conferences. I really love when the idea is nicely formulated. And it was like one-liner uh, again, of something that we have a couple of the episodes, uh, which I feel the sense of belonging to, is that whatever whatever teaching it is, whatever you call it, online teaching, synchronous teaching, asynchronous teaching, hybrid teaching, blended teaching, blended learning, it's still a teaching, and you still need a teacher as the main element there, but also who you are teaching. The methodologies can come and go. We ev develop, we evolve, we, we go on and on. But there will be always this triangle. Who teaches? Who do we teach? And what do we teach? And all together a symbiosis of how do we make sure that this process is happening. This is a very empowering idea that teacher first learner first, 
okay, these two elements at least first can release of a lot of stress. We are already doing a lot of online work. We are already using so many tools. We are learning more and more every day. But there should be teaching, there should be pedagogy, there should be the science that the learning is happening. Not only giving, but also taking, digesting, giving the time to reflect, giving the time to enjoy, giving the time to have this aha moment of not a given information, but the information the person came up to by themselves. So, yeah, that was another beautiful thought. I like this... Um think that you're saying that uh, the topics on the World uh, Teachers Day are the topics that we also find uh, essential and keep on discussing in our podcast. I uh, do feel that our thoughts and our discussions and our dialogues are in line with the topics that bother a lot of people, a lot of professionals, that people are seeking the answers for questions that we all relate to. And the more we are dis- the more we are raising the topics, the more we are discussing the possible solutions, possible experiences, case studies, what we do, what what we see, what kind of the challenges we see behind something, what kind of a takeaways can we see. It's something that we share on a weekly basis in our podcast. is something that uh, is bothering us. And uh, yeah, I was asked this question last week uh, by our product manager. Why are you doing this podcast? Because I have something that we that is worth sharing our experience and whatever unique it is or might not be unique in a you know broader and more general sense we're all discussing the same questions we're discussing well-being we're discussing resilience how to how to build up resilience what is this what is it not how to build cultural awareness being a teacher being a learner being a learner of different Uh, languages, being a learner of different skills, again, how to teach soft skills, how to teach digital skills, how to teach 21st century skills for teachers, for educators, for learners, how to, you know, to separate gross mindset from, from the fixed mindset, how to learn more efficiently during vacation, uh, during the semester. These are all the the episodes that are already online. This is something that we have already shared. This is something that you can find on, uh, what, 13 podcasting platforms and five social media. So welcome. We are brutally honest and sincere about our vision. This is how we grow, how we reflect upon what we do. And um, I don't know, what what is it for you? It is a way we live and learn. This is something that um, bothers us. And uh, this is something that um, we think about on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, and we are ready to discuss. This is something, first of all, that uh, we want to discuss into because we've been uh, colleagues and friends uh, for a long time now. But um, at some point, we also thought it might be of interest to other colleagues too, to other educators to students, to teachers, to school and academy management, to all the stakeholders of education who we also discussed in our podcast. And so we thought um, it would be 
unfair to just leave it to ourselves and decided to share these ideas about how we live, teach, and learn with the wider audience. So please join us, join our discussion, live and learn. Take it as a gift to the World Teacher's Day. We appreciate what you are doing. Happy Teacher's Day. Happy celebration. Live and learn. Curious about what we discuss next? Please subscribe to Live and Learn podcast and join our community on social networks. Live and learn.